Nice. Thanks. I'm Dweezil Zappa, and this is Guitar Power, and with me today is Khaki King. Hello. First thing is, how did you decide that guitar was going to be the instrument for you? Um, the guitar ended up really kind of cho choosing me. My parents wanted me to play an instrument, and they started me on four-string classical guitar. But as it turns out, I actually really wanted to play drums. And I started playing drums because I couldn't play guitar in band at school, so I like had a school activity. So I was playing drums, and then acoustic guitar is a way for me to really play drums on the guitar. But that sort of became this solo thing and something I did. It's almost like my shameful little secret, you know. <laughs> I was doing it, well, you, you know, did like it, you made watching it Martin fusion. Simpson videos late at night, <laughs> trying to, you know, copy little little things. So I think the, the acoustic for me was a way to do it all alone. So what I'm hearing is you started with a dream of playing the drums. Uh, I still but, have that dream. Okay, okay, and so then that's what helped you develop your style on the guitar because it's very percussive, it's very rhythm-based. It's rhythm-based, but I think more it's about the hands. So the right hand the and the left hand are independent and then you you know interlock them rhythmically. So yeah. if this hand's doing this and this hand's doing this, it's, it's back and forth between the, between the right and the left hand. I think that's kind of fundamental to what I do and I think I'm also a sort of 80% you know, right hand kind of gal. I mean, yeah. I really, <laughs> like I have the That's dexterity the and yeah, exactly. I think, I think much of what I do comes from a lot of technical prowess in this hand and this hand's like, I'll just try to <laughs> do what I can. <laughs> so, so the right hand creates the patterns and what developed it? Like, did you find one pattern that stuck with you? I think that learning how to detune was the first. That was like okay, a, you alternate know, tunings. Alternate tunings was a key that unlocked a, a door and I just fell into this universe. Is there like a favorite of yours? Was it just first like a drop D tuning or was it an open chord or? Yeah, Dadgad was the first one. Um, this is Dadgad and, and, it, and it allowed me to play a lot of Celtic tunes. So. Just for the, the, the person that has never heard of what that tuning is, just go string by string, sure. if you don't mind. D, A, D, G, A, D. That sounds great. Now, what I notice in, in a lot of what you do, and it's it's uh, it's an important part of acoustic uh, guitar in general, is that there's uh, such a beautiful sound when the strings can ring out openly, and, yeah. and having voicings that uh, can take advantage mm -hmm. of open strings. Yeah. And also, part of what you do, uh, which you didn't necessarily do right there, is sometimes the left hand will be creating bass parts that are independent of the strike sure. on the right hand. Mm -hmm. Doing this was, was a big, uh, I wouldn't say decision because it may, it felt really natural, but um, it certainly made me go, okay, am I doing this? Is, would it not be easier just to do this? But the problem is all the notes that are here when my hand moves around are blocked off. Yeah. So it made sense just to do it this way. So I add, suddenly I had access to strings down here, whereas here and I would And you wouldn't. can cross positions. Exactly. Give us an example of of how that technique became really useful to you. Sure. It's useful in a lot of ways. I have access to this part of the guitar to um, beat on it if I need. Um, but mainly, it gave the left hand the independence it was craving. That, you know, like I said, my left hand is yeah. not as strong as my right. But suddenly, I can do a bass line here. Or I can do. And then the right hand can fill in the gaps yeah. with that.
it's almost like making the guitar a piano yeah. in this instance. Um, you know, with the use of hammer-ons and pull-offs, and you know, even with this. So because it's just a single instrument and the composition can be so unique to the composer, mm. uh, you know, that's where you have found a, a way to, to um, connect with an audience. Like you have a very uh, distinctive style of playing. That's my goal, is to use the technique to create something incredibly powerful that, that is useful to someone's life. If I'm writing and it's not working, then I, that's when the technique changes. Yeah. There's no technique in a vacuum for me. If I want something that's faster or harder or gives me more, it's gonna be because the song demands it. Or instant, for instance. Like, telling people to mute the strings with the heel of their hand, that doesn't mean some, that doesn't mean something to everyone, right? But if you hear that, the, if you're not doing that, you're getting, you know. And that's a mess. So there's something clearly happening where the strings are being muted. And if you think about what are my options, you have to sort of narrow it down to, well, if I want to be able to do picking and this at the same time, it's got to be this heel in my hand here. So it's sort of like process of elimination. That's how I learned songs yeah. early on, by the way. Like when I was, you know, I'd listen to records. I'd listen to Hedges and Alex Grazzi and Martin Simpson and Chet Atkins and Nick Drake. And I would just think, okay, we're fretting down here, but clearly there's a note that has to be fretted up here. I'm in the wrong tuning. So how do I figure this out? And it was just by doing things that were mistakes until they just, the, the mistakes were gone and all that was left was the song. Well, so with that explanation, uh, we, we mentioned uh, Michael Hedges. And now, is that somebody that you did listen to or got some ideas about a style from? Yeah, I mean, anyone that plays fingerstyle guitar, any kind of percussive guitar. I mean, you know, Hedges is like, he's the guy. Yeah. Who I knew from childhood, because my father played all those Wyndham Hill yeah. records for me. Hedges was a huge influence, but you know, if, if I really want to be honest, the people that I was moved by were not the guitar players. You know, like PJ Harvey was majorly important for me because, because of her rhythms. I mean, she would start a song and you're like, okay, you know, here's the downbeat and you'd listen in for 30 seconds and then a bass would come in and you're like, oh my God, I've been listening to the upbeat the whole time. You know, just these amazing things she would do. She plays a lot of songs in six, four, and uh, Johnny Marr, you know, giant, giant Smiths fan. And, but, you know, specifically like Johnny Marr's right hand, like Johnny Marr's ability to pick and seemingly finger pick with a pick, these patterns, like that was, you know, incredible. And, Nick, and then Elliot Smith and Nick Drake were both, yeah. Well, I, I can hear some of like the the that influence that you're talking about, like Elliot Smith and some of his uh, melodic the, the vocal stuff with mm -hmm. the acoustic. You know, like now that you mentioned that that influence, that here was this dilemma. I loved this beautiful guitar music that had been made in the early '80s. Like I mentioned, Wyndham Hill, Will Ackerman, all those records, gorgeous, beautiful. But you know, it's like Northern California. Yeah. Life is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. I mean, <laughs> life fucking sucked. And I hated life and I, you know, I didn't know how to, to, to bridge this gap. So the only way that I could was to listen to someone like Nick Drake and write a song like him, but in a style that was, you know, intense and aggressive on the guitar. So, so that helped you uh, have a different way of approaching your compositions or? Yeah, I think that I just mean to say that, that the comp compositions to me, I wanted them to be dark. I wanted them to be more like P.J. Harvey. I wanted them to be more like like Drake or Elliot Smith. Like I, But you I still liked, liked the pretty things. I love the pretty things. I love them. I love the technique. You just wanted to wreck but it a little I bit. Was, I was not there personally. Now, what are you working on right at this moment? Like something brand new that hasn't made it yet. There's things in my current show that I want to be able to do and attempt night after night and sometimes fail and sometimes nail it. Well, like what? What you're going to show us is an example of one of the things that is a hit or miss thing for you because technically it's challenging. Yeah, I'm about to fail right in front of y'all. You have to imagine this with tons and tons of distortion. It's okay. like super loud and, the, and visually it's totally chaotic. So really what, it's, what I'm trying to do is play more metal licks. That's what I'm yeah. kind of attempting. So that
kind of stuff. I mean, really, it's all left hand. I'm going just kind to, of like you're blind. right on the edge. Yeah. But that's that's a really cool experience for a, an audience member who's going to see something that's unique to that night yeah. and, and not seeing it. That's that is true. Yeah, no, and it is it is a lot of the show that I do is 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 made up on the spot. I think that the lesson of things going wrong on stage, whether it's your sound or crazy feedback or the audience is totally not paying attention, is that no show is the end of your life. It's like n nothing is the end of your career. You did just... the seventeen-year-old you know that, or did you have to learn no. that later? No. Well, the way that I. Where, where I got my stamina, my career began on the subway platform in New York because I was, it was post 9-11 and I had just gotten out of college. And I didn't have a job and I didn't have any idea of what I was, like what I was meant to be doing. And suddenly the world collapsed. I just, I don't know. I just needed a connection with people. I needed a little coin in my pocket. I don't know what made me do it, but I went to the subway and I started playing guitar. And I realized that like everything happened that could happen. And I broke strings, and I had weirdos, and I had noise, I had trains coming in and out. And it's like, I played through it. So that sounds like it was the perfect way to, to get you to be able to clear your mind and focus on what you needed to do. I recommend busking to everyone. Just roll with the punches. Yeah. Nice, well, I wonder if we should try playing a little bit more of something. I'm gonna be D for Dweezil. Okay, D for Dweezil. Kaki King, ladies and gentlemen.